How to be successful, think like a leader from M. Curtis McCoy. And with that warm words, welcome to another episode of Inspiringly Different or Inspirant Anders. My name is Luca Beutel and with me together from the United States of America, M. Curtis McCoy. Hi, Curtis. Hey, Luca. Thank you so much for having me as a guest today. I really appreciate you, man. <laughs> How is it going? How did it came to that book even? I mean, I ordered it a few weeks ago and I read, I have to be honest, I read through it in a day. Really? That's awesome. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't stop. So you read through it faster than I read, than I read through when I was editing it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it had something to do that uh, I was starting to read it when I flew to Turkey And our plane had a delay of three hours. Oh, yeah, that so probably I was, re was really sitting there and was like, oh, man, that sucks. But I'm I'm happy that I have a book with me. I love it. That's actually the fourth yep. book that I've written. I wrote oh, nice. I, I wrote that one first, but it's the fourth one that I published because all of my books are self-published. And so I knew that one was one that I really wanted to get out to the world and, and be able to rank well. But I had never published a book. So I had two authors working for me. Uh, that were working, you know, one of my retail cell phone stores and the guys were writing content for, you know, search engine optimized content for the website. But we made that a project where, you know, where they were editing and helping, help make sure that it came out real well. So I, I wrote the first book, had that all finalized, ready to go, and then wrote three additional short books in order to learn the marketing side of it and how to make sure that that was, you know, make sure it ranked well on Amazon and those type of things. And so then when that fourth one was published, How to Be Successful, Think Like a Leader, I ranked ranked uh, best, number one bestseller in nine separate categories on Amazon. What kind of a cool thing to... A lot of extra work that most authors probably don't do. That is so clever. It. That is so clever, Curtis. Appreciate it, man. I'm well, glad yeah, you love the book, said, too. Mo yeah, most of the people don't do that. They just write a book, uh, they, they, they find it awesome, and they say, okay, let's publish. And most of the time it sucks because you don't know the surroundings. You don't know how to do anything and it's like i think you mentioned it in your book too or at least in in many books that it's mentioned that you suck at things at first yep <laughs> yeah it's kind of our default setting huh yeah you have no idea what you're doing and you have to do some some test runs uh and i think that's that that was pretty clever of you how cool appreciate and it and how did it came that i mean Maybe explain to the people what what it's about. I mean, the the title is pretty self-explaining. How to be successful? Think like a leader. But what's in the book? Maybe in your words. So it was a really cool thing where I I actually started writing the book because I was going through brain cancer. I had a malignant glioblastoma. Was given sixty to ninety days to live. Basically, I had zero chance of survival. This is back in twenty ten, so like twelve years ago. But I I decided I I started a little blog and started writing I, as I was reading books. I'd write down inspirational notes and stuff about the book so that I could remember what was what was being said because my memory was ter terrible with the brain cancer. But as it went along, I I decided that I wanted to try to leave a legacy. At the time, I didn't have, you know, wasn't a multimillionaire, didn't have a bunch of money to leave my family. But I thought by writing a book where I was interviewing these people that I really looked up to, um, like the guy that invented the MP3 player, the number number one Navy SEAL team sniper in history, uh, a, lot of, a lot of just really cool people. And I wanted to connect with them and, you know, interview them on their insights on success, motivation, and inspiration. So, you know, as I reached out, I started, I contacted hundreds and hundreds of different people. Many of them turned me down. I think the ones that really needed to be featured in the book, you know, as far as that had a message to share that were going to be a good, good message for the audience. Those kind of got curated down to where they're all sharing their insights on how to be successful and how to think like a leader. And you even, you, you didn't necessarily know all of them. You just uh, randomly contacted people. I sent letters. I sent, uh, I, I spent over three years writing the book where, you know, reaching out to people. I would, I would drive to some random location, go meet them for lunch or coffee or just did anything I possibly could to get in contact with them. Now, that's one thing that you did with me here that I really appreciated. And I like where we're kind of on the same page. You ordered my book, had it shipped to you. It just really made me feel good that, that you're willing to not only invite me on the podcast, but you'd reached out and re read the book and went through, went through and studied it. So that's kind of yeah, what I did with the guys that I was interviewing as well as make yeah. sure that I was I mean, it, providing value. It's first. about quality, right? Yep. I mean, we can, we all can do quantity. We all can do, I could do seven to 10 podcasts a week 
but who who's going to listen to that? I, I I'd rather produce one really good podcast episode with one awesome guest a week, a month maybe, um, instead of doing like ten podcasts a week and only glancing over the surface of of, of guests or yeah. topics. And I think you did the same same thing here. It's what I what I like is you show your guests that you appreciate them that you appreciate their time because that's at the end of the day that's uh, really speaking at the end of the day yeah. it's the most valuable thing in the world well and we had so i had conversations with well over 100 different leaders that i admired and up you know looked up to and just these were guys that i, I thought you know a lot of more guys that i thought you kind of basically you want to be that kind of a guy when you grow up and as i was meeting with some of these guys or having the conversations there was probably 90% of the people that were that I was wanting to share their knowledge with or did not get their interview included in the book. So the, mm -hmm. the ones that are in there, there's a total of 27 chapters and only maybe nine or 10 that are, that are interviews with people that I really felt like were needed to be heard. And so that was a, uh, that's the thing too, that a lot of authors do is they'll throw a book together quick. You know, if they're, maybe they're doing a book yeah. with interviews and they interview 10 people and all 10 of them get into the book. And that really doesn't provide any value to the audience when, any of us can go out and have conversations with 10 random people and, and get their advice. But I think the point of what I did by spending so much time and work and also having two full-time employees that were going through reading and making sure that everything was on track, we'd even research people's background and stuff and make sure that there wasn't anybody that was suspicious, faking it or, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because there's so many people now, like, you know, especially Instagram, you look at Instagram or these YouTube channels and stuff. And these guys look like they're super successful, multimillionaire, wealthy guys. But then you find out on the back end that they're, you know, they're they're driving a rented Lambo, or yeah. you know, they, they drive I mean, one day from there, pictures. And, yeah, yeah, there are there are so many documentaries on Netflix or Amazon Prime now about these fakers, like inventing. I mean, at, at least in Germany, it's called inventing Anna or uh, the the Tinder, the Tinder Schwindler, okay. <laughs> the liar on Tinder, heard where about. people totally totally fake their identity over social media, over Tinder, and make others believe that they are something that they are not, actually, and make them send over money and trust them. And yep. they never see their money again. Like thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars are oh, wasted on these people. Yep. And it's, yeah, and yeah, so I understand that you make this kind of background checks. And yeah, quality, quality is everything. How did you, I mean, when you did one, over 100 interviews, um, how did you... How did you sort out that these are the nine or I don't know how many people, I think it's seven people or eight in the book that you interviewed? Yeah. How, how, did you, how did you come to that number or was it like, okay, I have, they were the most inspiring to me? Or did you say, okay, they, they had kind of the different, uh, the same story, um, I don't need to tell that twice or? Well, so I took, as you can tell in the book, I've interviewed everywhere from, the guy that owns Venture Advocates, or he <laughs> sold Venture Advocates, and now he's owned FranchiseSellers.com for years. But um, Eric, you know, he's, we spent a lot of time mountain biking together, you know, having lunch, having coffees, different things, and having these conversations and making sure that, I mean, Eric is still one of my good friends. He's just a good dude. He's super busy, so can't get a hold of him very often, <laughs> but uh, just good dude, to, good dude to meet up with. But I tried to make sure that there's everybody from the venture ad, but you know, uh, franchise sellers dot com guy to you know church leaders, you know, very successful yeah. church leader to also ex convict guy that was in prison for years and has now yeah. become very successful and had conversations with a couple of different homeless guys. Contrasted those the the one guy that I had met when he was you know I met him when he was driving a twin turbo custom Ferrari, you know, very wealthy. And as we were talking, he I found out later that he had been he actually started out homeless. And had built his way to success after losing everything. And then I contrast that with another guy, another homeless guy that I talked to that was, uh, he was homeless because he liked drugs. He liked not having any responsibility. He didn't want the, you know, didn't want to put in the work to become successful. So there's a lot of that contrast like that, that people seem to really enjoy with. It's not just one type of, I'm not, I'm not interviewing just business people. It's people who have become very yeah, successful absolutely. in different yeah, industries. To make, yeah. To make it clear, they are, they are as different as possible, um, the people you interviewed. So <laughs> as you said, from the sniper to the um, inventor of the MP3 player to also um, your mom, right? Yep. Yeah, my mom's also, <laughs> and I wouldn't have inter interviewed my mom just because she's my mom. 
but she's been very successful. She, she actually was the CMO of one of my companies for years, over 10 years. Uh, she ran my, one of the telecommunications companies and managed one of the three retail stores. So that's another thing that I had a real good connection because she was my mom and I probably could not have afforded her. I mean, even afford to interview her or definitely couldn't have been afforded her as an employee if she wasn't related by blood. So I was pretty lucky on that side. <laughs> the rest of them took a lot of work to reach out to. But is it, how was it for you to put that much personality and personal life into the book? Because that's what I enjoyed reading through because you really get the feeling that a human is writing this book. Like this is not, there are feelings in this book, a lot of feelings and not only from you, but also your interview guests and your mom. Um, when they describe how uh, horrific the message was when you got, got your diagnosis, uh, when they diagnosed it with, di what to call the word again? A diagnosis. Um, diag yeah, when you got your diagnosis um, and how you came out, how you worked. And there is a lot of personal life in the book. You know, part of what made it so interesting to write was being able to interview over 100 people and filter out the, the ones that, so just as an example, the, the very, one of the chapters, we had over 250 revisions on one chapter of the book. So, oh, wow. um, <clears throat> and that's, that's probably, maybe I'm not a great writer, but anybody can, can do anything and make it exceptional. Like I said, bestseller in nine separate categories on Amazon with no, you know, I didn't have a, a writing ex any experience yeah. writing, but just because I decided me and these two writers that were, they're not book authors. Both of these guys were search engine optimization experts, guys writing for my for my telecom company. Be able to have these guys, you know, myself and then two other people that were making sure. Sam was one of the guys that he's just a uh, like a walking thesaurus. And so he'd say, hey, you've got a, you know, this should end, or, you know, he's got a prep preposition here and it should be something else. And I'm like, listen, Sam, I don't even know what you're talking about, but let's change that and make it right. <laughs> Let some experts give me some feedback there, you know. What was the time when you, how long did it take from the first word you put down on some, I don't know, sheet somewhere um, till, okay, now now it's finished. And I'm not speaking about publishing because mm -hmm. obviously you delayed it on purpose, um, the publishing. That was over three and a half years, the... over three and a half years to write one book that was only, it's a hundred wow. and 185 pages. So it's not a very thick book, but. No, it's super easy. Yeah, three and a half years of work went into make sure we cur created or curated down the best possible interviews with guys that really had the the insights on how to become how to be successful yeah. like a leader yeah and i what i what i also liked about your book is um that you are not only writing from your own perspective and your own experiences because i think always when i read a book where a person only writes from his own experiences his own perspective i have to feel like okay that's what you went through yeah Uh, but it doesn't necessarily apply to all of us. But if you put together a bunch of people, and in your book it's it's seven, but I think in between the interviews you have these small sections where you um, give tips or advice in some kind um, how to be successful. Um, I think that's what you experience, but also what the seven people experience and what the other 93 people experience that you interviewed. And all around you, your whole life. So I like that because that is much more applicable to much more people. I appreciate that. Yeah, I would say it's really a fun, fun thing to have done. And like I said, I ended up surviving brain cancer and so <laughs> I didn't die. I probably would not have worked that hard if I, if I did, if I wasn't trying to leave a legacy where, you know, something where my mom could keep a copy, you know, keep a copy <laughs> after I'd, after I'd passed or whatever. But But I'm actually writing two additional books right now. My my timeline for publication is going to be much longer than than the average author. But I'm trying to make sure that it's a can make sure it's a true value to the uh, to the reader. Can you give us a sneak preview about the next two books? Um, so one is on is on uh, personal branding. Figure mm -hmm. out how to turn yourself into a personal brand. Where, as an example of this, I owned a cosmetic medical laser clinic, a pharmaceutical company a company that manufactured and distributed uh, different supplements to gyms and uh, retail locations nationwide, had a Christian clothing company, had um, you know a number of different businesses. My telecommunications company, Best Cellular, we ran for over 10 years. A company that was, had over 250,000 customers a month hit the website. So a big name company, I mean a big company. Yeah. But the day that went out of business, 
nobody knew who I was. And so that's something that I I realized way too late was you need to build that personal brand where people know, Mm. okay, M. Curtis McCoy is a reputable guy. He's a, you know, he's got whatever the, whatever knowledge is. And when he starts the next whatever random company, it's going to be successful. It's going to be, you know, going to be a good beneficial thing to the world. Like how Richard Brunson has done with the Virgin, Virgin Group, Virgin, you know, Media, Airways, Records, all these different companies. I don't know him as a person, but he's done a great job of the personal branding. So that's the first book is going to be on personal branding. And another one is on personal identity. Learn to be, become the person that you're supposed to be, that you were, that God created you to be. So you don't have to be a, you don't have to be Christian or religious to read the book and get some good knowledge out of it. Uh, but it's mm-hmm. going to be basically my insights on not only mine, but same thing, interviewing other people who have created incredible personal brands and letting them share how you can create your own brand and, and, and establish nice. your own identity as well. In the same, do you plan to write the books in the same style like your like the How to Be Successful book with interviews and in between small chapters with personal advice? Absolutely. Love People it. seem to enjoy that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, enjoy, I enjoy that a lot. Um, also, I, I mean... As you mentioned, it has how many? One hundred forty pages. Or I think it's one hundred eighty-five. Hundred and yeah, one hundred and seventy, one hundred and eighty, something like that. And I mean, that is not that much six. pages. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's not that much pages. But you really reduced it on on what matters. I had the feeling. I I, I didn't get the feeling in a chapter like, oh, okay, he is uh, he is really making a point now like again and again yeah. and again and he's trying to fill around pages with something. joke yeah <laughs> and i didn't get the feeling and that's that's what i don't like about other books because then they i, I kind of get the feeling okay they needed 250 pages and now they had made 10 pages basically saying nothing like a good politician yep does all the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and I didn't get that feeling at all. And it, it's a it's a really quick read. Now I I mean I can recommend it to everybody. Um, also because you have book recommendations um, and your pieces of advice that you that you give are are really they are from A to Z. They cover a lot of topics in your life. It's not only business advice you give. It's also advice for your personal life. How to win friends. I mean we have one book in common. I like how to win friends and influence people. One um, of my favorite books. You've read it a hundred times. <laughs> Probably a couple times. I maybe it. F 20 times, but <laughs> still read it like at least two times a year. Um, when you go through your book again, in retrospective, what is your favorite av- advice? There's so much. None of the advice yeah. in the book that I love is my own. I mean, there's, there's some good things that are typically, basically outtakes from these other leaders or like, like I mentioned the two homeless guys, but probably my biggest advice overall is, you know, this is not even the book. It'll be in one of the next, one of the next books here. But I, I wish people would know if I could, if I could take out a billboard, it would say something along the lines of you were created by a God that loves you. You were created in his image. So by default, you're incredible. Whether you, whether you believe it or not, you're, you're created by somebody that was created the entire universe. And he didn't create the tree or the donkey or the frog or whatever in his image. He created you in his image. So by default, you're absolutely incredible. And I wish you could see yourself as as how God sees you, as, as how other people look at you. So many of us go out and we, you know, we go to the grocery store, we go to the coffee shop, and we feel like we're, you know, we feel like we're not good enough, or maybe we're concerned or nervous about speaking in public or introducing ourselves to someone. But everybody else around you is looking at you, and there's something that, that they admire about you. So I just wish you could see see how great you really are. Yeah. I once got an advice um, from someone who said, when you have a problem, then treat the problem like your best friend would treat a problem for you. Like like you would tell your best friend, hey, I got problem X, Y, Z, and see it from his perspective. That's incredible. Because, and, and, it's, and it's kind of uh, going in the same direction here from what uh, from what you said i love that advice uh, that's awesome <laughs> you what what i also recognize is um you are a really religious person but you already mentioned it's not uh only for religious people written the book so you don't have to have the right in air, air quotes uh right religion to read this book but it's clearly because it's so personal the book 
that it's clearly that you are a religious person and that plays a big part of your a big part in your life right yeah and i'm not actually i'm not religious i'd say i i have a relationship with god i feel like mm -hmm. I feel like i've got that connection and um just through personal experiences I've, i've grown closer as i as i get older here but like in uh so in chapter nine interview with connie wyatt that's my mom um she was talking about how at a conference she had heard a speaker say somebody had said that you don't have to be a or they were asking the guy because this was a i think it was les brown was talking about his his faith and the things about you have to live like christ did you have to love people you have to serve people you have to do what's best for other people you have to care about him you have to be honest you have to be a, a good person to be good in business and so an audience member who was an atheist reached had commented something about well if i'm an atheist you know how can i can i still be successful and he said mm -hmm. you don't have to be you don't have to be a christian you don't have to believe in god to be successful but you do have to believe the or you do have to do the things that jesus taught in the bible kind of what i'm looking at more now is i'm not religious i'm not i, I don't try to force that on anybody and, and you know i've got friends that are different faiths different different beliefs and stuff and i, and I would never tell them oh you're wrong but <laughs> that's just my personal personal connection that i've got yeah and i've I mean, we are living in a world that is so different. When I leave Germany to come to the U.S., it's so different. When I leave the U.S. to go to Brazil, it's so different. And people believe different things. People yeah. have lived different lives, different lifestyles, different childhoods. It's normal that you believe different things. And it's the beauty of the world in some way. So with your book, I can assume that you're not saying you have to be religious in whatever kind of religion to be successful <laughs> and to think like a leader. <laughs> yeah, no, this is like, again, it's just sharing the insights from other leaders, other successful leaders. And, yeah. uh, letting them letting them give their views on success and some are religious some are not There, there's very successful people that don't believe in god but yeah it's just yeah, uh true and, and you're free to have your own belief that's that's the beauty of yeah. how we're created have you ever asked yourself um what would have happened if this brain tumor didn't have happened so that's a that's a really good question i've actually never been asked that been on podcasts and radio shows and all kinds of different <laughs> stuff and never yes. had asked that but yes <laughs> good unique question there I hadn't ever really thought about that. I've I would not choose to go through it again, but I think everything that we go through, every struggle, every problem is all something that's going to be a good thing that we can turn into a good thing. So many people choose to let their past circumstances, whether that was being abused as a kid, being a, you know, having a having a husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend that was just terrible to you or friends or parents or whatever it was, or you know, there's people who still identify as, well, yeah, I, You know, I had cancer 40 years ago, and I still still don't feel real good because of the cancer. Like, you get over that 40 mm. years ago. Stop identifying <laughs> as what happened in the past and identify <laughs> as uh, as what you're doing today, what you're moving toward. Yeah, true. I mean, you can always find excuses. You can always find excuses. Yeah. If you are not, uh, how, how should I say it? It's important to leave your comfort zone. Absolutely. And I think with this book, you give a lot of advice to leave your comfort zone. Right, Curtis? Yeah, that was kind of the goal. <laughs> um what was the last time you did leave your comfort zone this morning would be one of the times i do a weekly uh, speaking class with Toast with toastmasters and uh -huh. like i said i've given hundred, hundreds of speeches i've spoke at caesar's palace and quite a few different cool venues with the brain I mean, cancer you have quite something you have, you have quite something to tell and to talk about i mean but as you can hear here on the podcast sense. you know i stumble over my words i still you know i the brain cancer really messed up for a while i could not even speak or communicate and so um i've got to where i'm doing better with the speaking but mm -hmm. the the my least favorite thing ever is giving somebody else criticism or, or feedback and mm -hmm. this morning i was an evaluator for one of the speakers and so that's one that <laughs> i always hate doing that because i i don't want to give somebody negative feedback or tell them hey you should have done something differently did but, you give a feedback burger like hey i really liked But at the end, it was good. <laughs> yeah. Well, this one, this kid that was, he was given his first speech ever and did an incredible job. So we oh, nice. actually made it very easy on me, but that's one of those things where uh, I, I would rather speak to a massive crowd of people or do a TV or radio or podcast interview any day mm -hmm. than have to, in front of a group of people, tell somebody what they did wrong. Yeah. I, I mean, it's hard for us to, 
I always, uh, for me, it's easy to be criticized and to take criticism and to work with it because I was yeah. playing, like I was acting and playing theater from a, in my childhood and in my teen years. And so it was pretty easy, like, okay, if you are on stage and you are, you're probing, then the, the, the regisseur is not the most kindest, kindest person in the room. He's like, no, again, no again no again you're like gosh <laughs> so from that point on if someone criticizes you it's pretty easy <laughs> to yeah. take it not uh, not personally but i also struggle with giving to cr also struggle with criticizing people from time to time because it's ah it was it was an awesome job but if you ask me that's the point I would work on. And yep. I don't, but I don't want to feel you bad because it was an awesome job. <laughs> I love that. Curtis, did you feel like um, maybe following up to the, to the very, very unique question I asked, did you feel like you had to go through all this in your life to be where you are now? Absolutely. So I, I think the brain cancer probably had less to do with where I'm at than, I, you know, I, I was running multiple successful companies. I mean, very successful companies sponsoring events at the Denver Coliseum, uh, bodybuilding shows, you know, these major, major things <laughs> working with IFBB pro bodybuilders, pro fitness models, figure competitors, uh, the Denver Broncos cheerleaders, the Denver Nuggets dancers. So nice. as, as far as to become successful, no, I absolutely did not need the, the brain cancer to be successful. That was a, <laughs> that's been a massive hurdle that has mm -hmm. really screwed up. Even like speaking, you know, I get up and you ask me a question and I can't remember what the question is about. Um, so no, the, the brain cancer, I don't think was, was something that I had to go through to become successful, but it did help, I, I guess going through, you know, growing up with the abusive father and the, I mean, I, I had some pretty terrible stuff. No, I don't think I put it in the book, um, about, about my dad told me to do the world no, a favor and commit suicide. Hear from me the first time. Okay. Um, growing up, I had a really rough, rough childhood with my, you know, my dad was just not a good dude. And to the point of one day, you know, after I'd been being beat on for hours, he handed me a loaded pistol and told me to do the world a favor. I, you know, told me I, I'm a waste of skin, I'm a waste of oxygen, those type of things. So I think that's more what that struggle is what kind of turned me into who I am now because it gave me the opportunity mm -hmm. to see that is not what I want to grow up to be. I mean, even when I'm sitting there on the bathroom floor with the pistol in my mouth, going, is this a, that's kind of a, that's kind of a point where, you go, I'm either going to make the choice to end my life now or, you know, as I'm being instructed to, or I'm going to uh, try to figure out how to become somebody different and become, become somebody that never puts somebody else in that type of situation. So oh, yeah. that Please. growing up like that was what helped me to become, I think, more inspirational and uplifting and, and trying to be somebody that is, you know, being a good example and helping encourage others and uplift them and stuff. So I think we all, I mean, yeah. you, you, you either... Like I mentioned before, you either focus on your struggles and that becomes your identity where, oh, I was the kid that was abused or, oh, I was a cancer survivor or I'm a diabetic. And, and you let that negative stuff become your identity like most of the world does. Or you decide, you know what? Hey, forget about the past. I am an uplifting person. I'm an inspiring person. I motivate others. I inspire others. And that's my purpose. I mean, how incredible is it that you did this choice or you choose to do that when you were a child? Because everything you know as a child is most of the things you know, most of your identity you have is based on how your parents act or yep. and your friends maybe or your or your or your siblings. And how awesome is it that you could make this decision that you saw a way out or not a way out, but a different approach to things. Well, and it wasn't at that point, we all, you know, we're all growing and continuously changing, I guess you'd say, but I didn't start out with that. When I'm sitting there on the bathroom floor, I was, I couldn't tell you how close I was to, to actually finishing my life. Just going, if my own dad, the guy that's supposed to love me, you know, yeah. supposed to be the, the I mean, example and the leader. And he's telling me you're a waste of skin. You're a waste of oxygen. Do the world a favor. That was a very difficult decision. And, and at the time, you know, being abused like that for years. When I was sitting there, the decision that I had at that split second was not, do I do I kill myself or do I become an inspir inspiring person? It was, do I kill myself or do I kill my dad? You know, to use this pistol and, and do actually do the world a favor and wipe him out. You know, and, and I was basically just too afraid to do that. I'm going, to, you know, I had the stepmom that was, she's a real good shot. Not somebody you'd want to take on. Also, I had three stepbrothers and a, and a brother. And it was kind of a... Uh, 
we had grown up not being, we were, we were kept where we weren't ever the family team or, you know, the, the brothers were never close. And part of that, I think, was to keep us separate and stuff. So I'm, I'm sitting there with this pistol going, I've got six shots in this, in the 357 revolver. And how many shots can I get off if it takes one or two of my dad? How many other, how many shots can I get off before you know, the stepmom comes in and takes me out there? And do I go to prison? Do I, you know, what's the deal there? Um, so the, the split second decision there, I guess not split second, but the decision there was not to either end my life or become an inspiring person. It was end my life or not and see if I can make it another day, another, you know, another hour. Can I just keep going that few, you know, that next few minutes? I think all of us, we never realized the, what's coming in the future, you know, down, down the road. We look too far or too short in the, in the short distance. They're just trying to figure out how to get through something right away without realizing that that one, that one decision or that one struggle that you're going through can, can completely change your life down the road. I wouldn't, I wouldn't voluntarily go through that again, but it's definitely a blessing because it helped make me who I am. Who would want to go that through that again? But we all through, we all go through crap. I mean, it's not, we're not a, uh, everybody you mentioned or Instagram, everybody that's on Instagram looking like they've got this perfect life and all the, you know, just this incredible life. Mm. Um, you look at me right now, I'm, I'm sitting here in front of this, you know, nice looking background and stuff. It's a green screen that is, <laughs> is made to look, make the look video look, look good and stuff. And I had, uh, when you, when you talked about these struggles and just surviving the moment or just make it another day or another hour or another minute. I had to think about your book again because there the sniper mentions. Yeah. Um, if you struggle, I can't recall it in, in perfect words. Maybe I'm messing this up. But he says if you are really struggling and you don't and you think you can't survive another second, and just say in your head, only one more second. Yeah. And three seconds are gone. <laughs> Do this ten times, and thirty seconds are gone. Do this a hundred times, and. Uh, Five minutes ago. And that was Je Jeff Wobig. And uh, he's talking about the, I think he was talking about being in the ice water, just frigid, you know, Navy SEAL team training oh, yeah. there. Um, yeah. That's chapter six with Jeff, they call him Biggs. He's one that was just an absolute, you know, they're sitting there at the restaurant where I interviewed him at. He's the most humble, mellow, just, just, a, just a nice guy. But you've got this feeling around him where you're like, something is different about this guy. I realize that. I, he could probably kill me with a spoon that he stirred his ice tea with. <laughs> um, kind of a cool thing. Like with, John Wick. Yeah, yeah but he's Man. a, uh, I, haven't, I haven't seen that, but that was a cool thing too, just, just realizing. Yeah. And, and, you know, I hadn't met Jeff at that time, sitting there on the bathroom floor, but it, it was just that, that thing about setting, you know, if you get through that next, if you can't make it another year, try to make it another day, another minute, another second, and just keep pushing yeah. and pretty stuff, pretty soon ch stuff changes for you. I sometimes, um, Because you're not the first motivational speaker I have on here. I had a bunch in, in Germany already. Sometimes, or coaches um, or book writers. I sometimes have the impression that in order to be able to write this kind of advice down and to give this kind of advice, I sometimes have the impression that you need to go through some horrible shit in your life. It's not possible without Or I haven't met the person yet who gives good advice, or is n and is not a copycat. There's a lot of those, a lot of copycats that are like the the ADD or ADHD thing right now is is a very popular topic mm -hmm. because a couple of guys that do have ADD or ADHD or whatever it is have created massive TikTok followings and stuff. I've got a friend Kobe Watts who's you know he's got millions of followers talking about ADD and ADHD, but when he started blowing up. There was all these guys that are now self-diagnosed, not because they've actually got it, but because they're trying to get the following and trying to sound like you know, like the Me Too. Uh, oh, I suffered yeah. from the same thing, kind of a deal. Here goes the bandwagon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here goes the bandwagon, Curtis. Uh, yeah, it's 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 refreshing to talk. I mean, on the other hand, on the one on the one side, I don't wish anyone to live through the experiences some people tell what they had to live through, like you, for example. I don't wish for anyone. I wish for everybody to have a nice, beautiful, happy childhood and a nice, uh, easy life and become successful. Um, but it seems like you have to go through some shit. And of course, I know even I or even no, everybody has to go through some shit. But I think sometimes that it sometimes focuses on, a, on one person a lot of bad things that happen to this person that they are kind of a magnet 
and uh, are attracting negative events and bad things and bad people and bad making bad choices. I sometimes have this feeling. I don't know if I agree with that 100%. I mean, a lot of us go through some junk, but if you're struggling right now, if you're going through just a terrible, maybe you're a kid listening to this and you're just trying to figure out, you know, you've got an abusive parent or you've got bullies at school or something going on where it's just life sucks right now. But if you look at a, uh, you know, not to go back to the sound like a preacher, but the story of Job in the Bible is a is one that really got me, helped me understand a lot that basically you're given, you, you're only given struggles that you can handle. And so if somebody's got a, doesn't have that mental capacity or that mental fortitude, that ability to be able to deal with terrible stuff, you typically got a little bit better. You, you typically live a little bit easier life. You look at these guys that are born with, you know, no arms, no legs, they're completely paralyzed, and they're out doing motivational speaking and stuff like that. <laughs> Just absolutely inc- Nick Nick Vinicek, uh, I think. Some of these guys, I don't think I would have made it through, you know, no arms, no legs, all this kind of stuff. I may have been hanging out, you know, just sitting in the wheelchair and letting somebody take care of me, but I can't imagine turning that into a, becoming a motivational speaker and doing all the crazy yeah. stuff that guy does. I think we're given this, the struggles that we that we can deal with, and struggles are not typically from, they're from the enemy, you know, whoever you think that is. I mean, it's a good, man, the Bible gives such good advices, yeah. Uh, and if you're going through incredible. that, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. if I you're mean, going through that, you you should be able to, hopefully you look at that and go, I know that I've got this struggle because maybe I'm going to turn that into a story that somebody else can hear later and it's going to inspire and uplift others. Or yeah. maybe it's going to help me become a, a stronger person, a more successful person in the future. Yeah, yeah. and also just, just the fact knowing or believing that this challenge was given to you because you're capable of going through it. Yep. If you wouldn't be, you would have a less challenging challenge. Well, bad English, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> um, Curtis, we we reached nearly 45 minutes. I would say before we um, say goodbye, I would say we go through some prepared questions I had for you. First one, what is your song recommendation? Do you have any song, any favorite song that's stuck in your head for weeks now that you said, or a, an old classic one that you say you should all listen to that? That's a difficult question. I rarely ever listen to music everybody says that <laughs> uh I, I i play lead guitar i've got a i haven't I haven't played in a while but it, i cannot think of a song right now anytime i'm in the car when i'm at the gym when i'm out walking the dog anything like that i'm listening to either audible or a podcast i'll be listening to your podcast i'm subscribed and uh, but i try to take that time rather than just blowing it off and listen to some something that's easy to hum along to i try to make that where it's a where it's a intentional time to be able to study and grow and learn. So I can't tell you of a song, but I would say if you, if you've got free time to be able to listen to something, check out the Inspiring Enders podcast. Right, Inspiring Enders. Yeah, yeah. Check out the Inspiring nice. Enders podcast. That's what I would recommend you listening to right now. Hope you enjoy this episode. Oh yeah. What is your book recommendation, Curtis? Besides, of course, think like a leader and uh, how to be successful. Yeah. So every author ever mentions their own book, but how to be successful? Think like a leader. <laughs> Um, you can get that at how to be successful.com, how the number two be successful.com. But I would also highly recommend how to win friends and influence people. I would read that over yeah. and over, grab, you know, different colors of highlighters and yeah. ink pens, whatever. And every time you read through, draw a land or make notes. Hopefully that's not a library book because you're going to end up owning it or paying for it. If you, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> if you're writing it too much, but yeah. yeah, probably how to be successful. I mean, uh, how to win friends and influence people. Is there, Curtis, is there someone, last question, is there someone that you didn't interview where you say, man, I wish someone would interview that guy? There's quite a few of those people that that didn't quite fit into the How to Be Successful Think Like a Leader book that I am reaching out to now to do some some interviews with, you know, in the next couple of books. And I, I plan to continue uh, writing this kind of my career. You know, I do coaching and coaching and business right. development right now, but I, I plan to write quite a few more books as I'm coming across people that are that have stuff to share with the audience that maybe they don't have time to write a book, but they do have time to sit down and grab a cup of coffee and share their insights. And, <laughs> and I can compile that into a book that gets shared with, with people who are looking for that advice. Curtis, I would say before we wrap this up, you have the stage now. Make some make some noise for yourself. Make some where can people find you? Where can people find your book? Um, when can we expect the next books? 
where to get them, where to listen to your podcast. I appreciate that. So you can get How to Be Successful, Think Like a Leader at most libraries, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, uh, pretty much any book book retailer. And if they don't have it, you can ask them to order it. And Amazon <laughs> for all the German. <laughs> yeah, Amazon, it's available in print. Uh, print, paperback, coming out with an audiobook and the, and the hardcover book as well. So that's pretty, pretty easy to find there. Uh, as far as getting a hold of me, I'm active on all social networks, most social networks, um, under M period Curtis McCoy. And you can also just Google me. I'm featured on the Google Knowledge Panel, so that should make it easy to get a hold of me there. Or mcurtismccoy.com. Appreciate it, Andrew. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Curtis, for your time. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for... Yeah, your engagement and thank you for, for writing books and spreading the message and not just being one more successful business leader, but being a successful motivational speaker and lifting others up. Appreciate that. Thanks so much for having <laughs> me on your show. This has been incredible. You had some really great questions. Thank you very much. Guys, thank you for listening again. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Curtis and me. And I hope you stay healthy, stay nice and friendly to each other. And we hear each other. See you there. Bye-bye. See you. Thanks.